Hey everybody, now we're going to talk about the OTL and OTU. And that is first mentioned that I know of in student programming exercise number four under the door simulation. Right here where it tells you to, you can use the binary table or the integer table to make flags. It also says that you can use the retentive OTL and OTU instructions. It says they may be utilized freely at your discretion. Um, I don't remember anywhere in the instructions where they explained what these are. Um, up here it says avoid the use of OTL and OTU for that um, exercise. And down here it says they can be used freely. So I guess they just assume that you're taught that outside of Logix Pro, uh, what these are. So OTL and OTU. If you're using actual uh, Allen Bradley software, like RS Logix Micro English, which is free, um, this should look very, very familiar. This is virtually identical to Logix Pro. And you go to help and instruction help. It gives you little links for every single instruction that you have in the program. You find your, OT, it's alphabetical. Here's your OTE, which is your normal output that you use for any normal location. Here they, ironically enough, they have the output tied to a uh, bit location, B3 colon four, uh, bit 14. And let me go back here. So OTs are your normal outputs. Um, if you can have those, they're only going to be true if the left side of the wrong evaluates to be true. It'll update that output to be true. Um, OTL is an output latch. Um, this instruction functions much the same as OTE, with the exception that once a bit is set with an OTL, it is latched. Um, once an OTL bit has been set on one in the memory, it will remain on even if the run condition goes false. The bit must be reset with an OTU instruction. Latch and unlatch instructions must be assigned the same address in your logic program. So I've said many times not to put the same address on multiple different outputs. This is the exception. If you have an OTE and an OTL, or an OTL and an OTU, you have to latch a specific location, and then you have to unlatch that same location. So you're going to have two separate rungs, one with the OTL to latch it, one with the OTU to unlatch it, and the outputs are going to go to the same location of memory. Latch and unlatch instructions must be assigned the same address in your logic program. Output addresses are specified to the bit level. So what that means, specified to the bit level, we will go back to Logix Pro. Specified to the bit level is also an error you'll get sometimes when you try to compile. Um, if you look at like the integers, this is a word. N7 colon zero is an entire word. So if you go to binary, it is 16 bits. So you'd have to have N7 colon zero slash zero to specify that specific bit. So if you have an OTL and you want to latch something, you can't obviously latch an entire word. You can't latch all 16 bits of this. Um, you have to specify to the individual specific bit that you want to change from a zero to a one or for a one to a zero. So where do we find these? Um, they're in the user on the very far right hand side. Um, there's probably somewhere else you can find them in here too. And here is the latch. So the other funny thing is you always have to have this bottom rung with an end on it. But if you drag an instruction down and drop it, it automatically pushes that down and adds a rung for you. So here's my latch. I am going to pick a binary location since we just talked about those. The lowest number binary location. And it still has my naming from the last one in it. Um, I can leave it that every time flag. So if I have a normally open contact, I'm going to switch the, oh, I already have the IO simulation. That's good. Drag that guy there. And all my names, all my labels are still on there from the last program I did. Um, now I need to do the same thing down here with this. And I need an OTU. So anytime you have OTL, anytime you have anything, an output with an L in it, you need one with a U in it. Because when that L gets energized, it's going to change that to that memory location to a one. And it's going to stay that way forever unless it gets unlatched. So these should both be the same location. You should never have just an unlatched or just a latched. You should always have a pair and they should both go to the same memory location. And what it's going to look like is download it and run it. Um, this memory location, which I will look at by going to the data table, 
and go into binary and it is this very top rate one when I energize or um, should say close the contacts on the switch wired to this input input one zero right here this will go true so the top rung will evaluate as true so it will make this OTL true which will change that memory location to a one now if this was a normal OTE actually let me show you what it does when it's a normal OTE I have another one down here this normal OTE and I will put that to a um, this bit location here so if I grab the right one and I will put a normally open contact that is from here possibly from there there you go download this and run it so this top rung here is turning on this bit. So when I undo this switch here and the left hand side of that rung evaluates as false, that bit location still stays one. It still stays true. You see it's highlighted there. No matter what you do now, since it's latched, you can turn that rung on and off all you want and it's never going to go off. It's always going to stay true. It's always going to stay on. The only thing that could possibly make it unlatch and go back to a zero is if you energize the rung that has this OTU associated with the same location. Um, here's the other interesting thing. Um, so this came up in class today too, because I asked the same thing. I said, if you don't have the second rung on here and you latch that memory location goes to a one, um, how could you possibly ever get it to change back if you don't have an OTU? Somebody said you could unplug it or kill the power. Um, right here it says, in the event of a power loss, any OTL controlled output device will energize with the return of power if the OTL bit was set when power was lost. What that means is if this bit is on and you kill power, when the power comes back on, that bit's still gonna be on and it's still gonna change it to a one. So even if you unplug it and plug it back in, it's not gonna do that. The old PLC5, you could configure what would happen during a power outage, what would stay on and what would go off and what would reset and all that. Um, this uh, is mostly for MicroLogix and the Slick 500 family. And like down here, they're talking about slots in the chassis. So if you're using a MicroLogix, there are no slots in the chassis. This is all Slick 500 related stuff if you're gonna read the um, explanation of how these work. Uh, but yet, even if you lose power, um, that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to turn that bit off. The only thing that can turn that off after it's been latched is to energize the unlatch, which is in rung 001. If I energize that, it energized this OTU, and you'll see neither of these are highlighted anymore, and it's going to be back to a zero. So I'll look at this binary. That's the bit we're looking at. So it'll stay up when I energize these. So it's latched on, I undo the switch, the left hand side of that rung isn't true anymore, but it still stays one and the output still stays energized right here. If I energize the OTU or output unlatch, it goes back to a zero, but that's the only thing that'll make it go back from a one to a zero. Um, killing power to that rung doesn't make it change states back. As opposed to if you look at rung two, if I energize that, Here's this bit location. This is a regular OTE that we use for the vast majority of things. Um, and most of your physical outputs are going to have an OTE with an OTE with an output memory address instead of a binary table memory address. Um, it's a one. If I kill power to the left hand side of it, it goes back off and it switches back to a zero. The only time it's true, um, try to highlight it there. The only time it's true is if the left hand side of that rung is true. And then it automatically turns itself back off whenever this goes back false. That's not the case for latching. Um, you can latch that and it'll stay that way forever until it gets that same address gets the signal to unlatch. That's how those work. Um, trying to think what other, if you have um, the unlatch, I've had this before because sometimes you'll have one place to latch and then multiple places to unlatch. If that makes any sense, let me drag this over here and I will cut that and I'll take the same address down here. So now you can latch it with one, but it only needs to get that signal for a second. 
Oh, I'm not online. Download and run it. So it could just be like one quick spike. It only got that signal for one um, time through of evaluating all the rungs, like one millisecond, that, that was true. It latched that output and that output is going to be on now. It's going to be one no matter what, even if this only was like a flash for a second. There might be multiple places in your program that can unlatch that depending. Like one might be a manual override, whatever this is. One might be a manual override that'll kill it. Another one might be um, whenever you hit a stop button on another device that'll um, energize the OTU to kill whatever this is, whatever this is powering. So sometimes you'll have multiple unlatches and sometimes you might have multiple latches that are all going to the same location. OTEs, you only ever want one OTE. Um, if it's not a latching or unlatching, it's just a normal OTE. You only want one address assigned with that OTE. But the latching and unlatching, you'll see multiple different um, rungs that are all going to the same memory address. But all they're doing is going to that bit, that very specific bit, and it's going to evaluate from top to bottom, left to right. Here it'll say, um, this was energized in the past. So this was energized and after that, there was never a um, unlatch. So it's gonna be a one and it's gonna be a one. It's always gonna stay one. It's never gonna to update to a zero until it evaluates a rung that's true and has an OTU going to that same address. And it can be either one of these. So one slash two is this guy. So that will make it go zero. Um, if I reset it again and see this is false, but it's still true and it's still one in there, this um, rung one will also make it go back to zero. So you can address a couple different unlatches to the same location, but everything is all just controlling this bit. This bit is what is important. You can um, address multiple different rungs with multiple different sensors and inputs, but they're all just changing this to either a zero or a one. That's all that's happening. It looks confusing and it looks like there's a lot going on. There's three rungs and six instructions here. All this revolves around whether this specific bit is a zero or a one. That's all it's doing is changing that. Um, and sometimes you'll have your latch up here and then it'll be like rung 25 is where the unlatch is and it's hard to figure out. So um, I guess I can't do that. And I'm trying to think if that works in RS Logix 500. If I right click this and go to cross reference um, yeah, I'm thinking of, uh, 5,000 or maybe if I go in the binary table, this one, yeah, I can't, um, other versions of RS Logix, you can right click on that address and hit cross reference and it'll come up with a list of everywhere in the entire program that that address is used. And it'll tell you like, subroutine whatever rung five or ladder two which is the one i'm in now um, rung one and rung two are the other places that that address is used and then you can double click on it and it'll take you straight to that location so if you have a latch um, the unlatch might be in a subroutine it might not even be in this same ladder so sometimes if it's a really big program it would be difficult to find find the unlatch or vice versa or sometimes this will be true um i'm not online Sometimes this rung will evaluate to true. This temp switch, if that's the case, will be on or, or sending a signal and your output won't be on and it'll be confusing. Uh, it's because somewhere else in the program, maybe it's out of sight, maybe it's in a subroutine, maybe it's 50 lines below, there is an unlatch to that same address that is also true. So right now, if you look at the bit table, binary table and this is the bit we're concerned with here you'll look at rung one and you'll say this temp switch is is on and it's a normally open contact so it's evaluating as true and it should be latching that over temp flag that should be on why isn't the over temp flag on because this might be you might only be able to see this top rung this other stuff might be buried like 50 rungs down so you're looking at this and you're saying this processor's broken, something's wrong. This is true, so this rung should be true, and why is this not highlighted, and why is bit is this bit location not a one? This should be on, and this should be a one, because that's true. Somewhere else in the program, there's an unlatch that is also true. 
that's what the problem is. So if I undo that, it'll go to one right away because I undid the unlatch. And it could be this other one too. There might be multiple places. You might find an unlatch associated with that same memory location. And you're like, well, this isn't made. And this is made, so it should be latched. It should be a one. There's another location somewhere in the logic that has an unlatch associated with that same memory location. That's what's going to happen. Um, I've seen that a few times. And I, I was like, how could this be? I'm online with the processor. This is real time. It's in run mode. This is evaluating as true. And it's not making this a one. And the output isn't on. That doesn't make sense why that would happen. Um, it's because every cycle it goes through, for a millisecond, it's evaluating this, it's turning that on, but then two rungs below it, in this case, it's evaluating this and it's turning it back off. So for a very, very short amount of time, like imperceivably small amount of time to a person, that is changing to a one between that and that, but that is so fast that the whole rest of the time when it's evaluating all the other rungs in the program and going back up to the top and doing its kind of like cleanup mood and the full scan, the vast majority of the time, 99% of the time as it's running, that's a zero. So we don't ever see it change to a one, but it really is for a very small amount of time before it gets down to this rung. In between evaluating the top rung and, the, and this third rung, it, it really is a one, but it's by all means it, it doesn't actually help or do anything or even have time to turn on like a relay output or anything like that because it's, it's literally like milliseconds that that's going to be true. Um, but if you, yeah, if you haven't seen that before, it can be really confusing. But hopefully I cleared up some issues. So if I um, de-energize this, it'll go back to a one because then the unlatch isn't made anymore and the latch still is, it goes back to a one. So if I have that unlatch, and I de-energize the top one, it just stays zero. Um, you could have this made. This isn't going to affect anything. And then the, that second one, you can also make that. All it's doing is saying, make this memory location a zero. But it's already a zero, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's not going to do anything. And now, if I send it the signal to latch, it's not going to, because now there's double. There's two different rungs that are telling it not to latch. If I turn those off, it will latch on. And then if I kill power to it, it still stays latched. So it only needs momentary power. Well, I think I've beat that horse long enough. Hopefully um, that clears some stuff up. And it's one thing to look at it with these two or three rungs and it makes sense. And then when you see it in a giant program and it's actually controlling something, it seems more complicated, but this is really it. All, all these are going to one location and they're all controlling one bit as a zero or a one. So hopefully that was helpful.